Ah, 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 don't touch that dial. Randy's Old Time Radio Show presents... Nasty Little Nugget deals with a man of letters, like D-E-A-D. It's a classical, scarifying story of treachery, larceny, evil, and greed. Just a few of my favorite things. (laughs) I can't give anything away, kiddies, but here's a hint. Brush up on your Shakespeare, or should I say... Shakespeare, the man who gave us such haunting hits as Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, Meaning of the Shrew, and Midsummer's Night Scream. Ah, yes, Fright Fiends, you're about to hear a tantalizing tale of terror that's absolutely certain to set the old bard spinning in his grave. It's my own venomous version of Merchant of Menace, I like to call. <laughs> Good morning, students. Here are the announcements. Today's hot lunch is French toast sticks. Not another sucky lunch. <laughs> Jeb, how many times have I told you no talking during the announcements? There's a yearbook staff meeting after school in Mr. Smith's room. <laughs> Freaking geek. Shut up. Did you hear that? Shut up. You can't, you can't be saying shut up to no kid. Jeb, you're right. Kindly shut up. Teachers, please dismiss members of the baseball team at the start of sixth period for the game against Central. Throughout the entire novel, we see Huck struggling with his decision to help Jim, a runaway slave. Finally, finally, in Chapter 31... He makes up his mind. Listen to this. I was a trembling because I'd got to decide forever betwixt two things, and I knowed it. I studied for a minute, sort of holding my breath, and then says to myself, All right, then, I'll go to hell. Mr. Wall? Excuse me, Mr. Wall? Uh, yes, Doris? I think I read the wrong, uh, you know, like, thing... Because I took down some guy named Sam Clemens, but you keep talking about this Mark Twain. Ah, frailty thy name is woman. Doris, who do you suppose is buried in Grant's tomb? Uh, I don't get it. You wanted to see me, Tony? Yes, Leonard. Sit down. I've had complaints from several parents about your attitude towards the students. I'm sure it's nothing, but I, I... Jeb, do you see this book? It's called a thesaurus. Thesaurus. It just so happens that you have an entry in it. Would you like to hear it? Thesaurus? What's that, some kind of freaking dinosaur? (laughs) (laughs) Ah, here it is. Stupid. Obtuse. Dense. Thick. Backward. Retarded. Feeble-minded, moronic, cretinous, deficient, wanting... Well, at least I ain't no frickin' lame-ass teacher. (laughs) Against stupidity, the very gods themselves contend in vain. The 
Then what the hell are you going to do, Professor? I haven't decided. I suppose that if the school board terminates my contract, I may have to pursue another line of work. Like what? You ain't exactly qualified for a whole lot else besides talking. <laughs> Actually, I have an idea that could be quite lucrative. Riches cover a multitude of woes. And my plan involves you, Cousin Dooley. Hmm, have another drink. Have you ever noticed the armored car that stops at the Capitol Bank? Don't shoot. And keep your hands over your head. Very good. Have you got the money, Cuz? I ain't no kidding yours. How'd you know I was going to stop here? Intellect is invisible to the man who has none. That's Schopenhauer, in case you're wondering. Uh, uh. You shot him! You idiot! What were you thinking? You had to go showing off, didn't you? Chopin who for my ass. Everyone knows you, Professor, the way you talk. Why didn't you just give him your phone number while you were at it? Come on, let's get the hell out of here. Yes, Miguel. Can I bring my book? It's three hours to Fort David. Let's see. Much ado about nothing. I don't see where Shakespeare is going to do any harm. So, time for the bracelet. Cuff my left hand, would you? Then I can hold the book in my right. So, let's get the war. Damn it, Devore, what's going on here? Wake up! The car is waiting. Devore! Dooley Devore, get up! Get up, you! Get up! Hey, wait, wait! I, I gotta take a whiz. Good morning, Gooley. Looks like we're joined at the wrist again. Hey, how come you always cuff my right and his left? It's not fair. Oh, I don't want to hear it, Devore. Let's go, your ride is waiting. Deputy Jerry Benson, reporting for transport duty, sir. You've been watching too many movies, kid. This is in West Point, and my name is Miguel. You're not alone, are you? Well, yes, sir. Warden says because of the cutback, he can only spare one deputy for transport duty, so I volunteered, Miguel. Who is this guy? Barney Fife? Hey, Barney, tell me. Did Andy remember to give you a bullet for your gun? Pleased to meet you, Deputy Benson. I'd offer to shake your hand, but you might come in contact with Cousin Gooley here. He's kind of hard to wipe off once you get him on you. As the bard says, they that touch pitch will be defiled. The bard? Eh? Professor says a lot of strange stuff. It's because he's crazy. Only nobody knows it but me. Elvis, huh? I beg your pardon? Elvis, you know. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about, Deputy Benson. Ah, call me Jerry. You know, it's the king. You were just whistling his song. It's now or never. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, what I was whistling, Jerry, was O Sola Mio. It was an art song written in Naples, Italy in 1898. Really? <laughs> What's that mean? O Sola Mio. It means my own son. A man is singing to his lover. The sun, my own sun, it's in your face. It's in your face. Yeah, well, Elvis wrote better lyrics. Hey, what is that you're reading there? Much ado about nothing. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Woo! You must be smart. That's why they call you professor, eh? Hmm. Jerry, I'm sitting here handcuffed to a convict with the personality of a wolverine and I'm on my way to court to pick up two consecutive life sentences. How smart could I be? Wow. What did you do to deserve two life sentences? I let Gooley carry the gun. Huh? 
What? You talking about me, Professor? Uh, always. He used it on an armored car driver. It seems that if your accomplice commits a murder while you're in the middle of a robbery, you both can be convicted for it. Oh, man, look at what we got What's going on, Jerry? Looks like the flash floods last week washed the damn road out up here. You can never trust the desert. Ah, I guess I could go back and pick up the interstate at exit 12. 40 miles out of your way? Do you have a map up there? Damn straight, got one right here. Well, what about the county road? I believe it's uh, 231. It catches the pass just south of here. Hey, news flash. I still got to take a whiz, Barney, and pretty damn soon. <laughs> Yeah, I see it. Got it right here. 231 goes through Lahara. I bet they got toilets there. So, Professor, how did you two fall in together? Anyway? I know it's hard to believe, Jerry, but Gooley and I are related. Yeah, he ain't no kid of mine. Gooley is my late wife's cousin. I've known him since he was seven. Looking at him now, you wouldn't guess that he was such a sweet boy. You wouldn't know sweet of a bitch in the ass, Professor. Hemingway once said that all things truly wicked start from an innocence. It was your plan, Professor. More like a fairy tale. An afternoon's work, Gooley says to me. Low risk, big pay. Only he couldn't do the thing by himself. Alas... Wait a minute, you two are the desert dogs, aren't you? I read about you guys. You held up that Briggs truck and, and then disappeared into the desert for, what was it, two weeks? Eighteen days in the sunny heart of hell, Barney. Wasn't it around here someplace that they caught you? Uh, King Flats, half an hour south. What was it, you boys got five million? More like six. And they never found any? No, they never did. Hey, hey, ready, Mart, they're on the left. Hey, are you going to stop or what? Because if you're not, I'm going to let go right now, and you can mop up the puddle. Okay, okay, I'm stopping. All right, you two, I'm going to get out and look things over. can see him through the store window. He's arguing with the attendant. Let us be thankful for fools, but for them, the rest of us could not succeed. This could be our break, Gooley. What do you mean, break? More like uh, another one of your fairy tales. Whoa, whoa. Hey, 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 here he comes. Listen to me. If I see any chance at all, I am going to take... Come on, man. Let's get this over with. Whoosh. It's about time. This heap is about to become a flood zone. Come on, Professor. I gotta go. Wait, I dropped my book. Sorry, Jerry. It fell out of my pocket. Uh, let me just... Ah, what the... Now, Gooley, get the goddamn gun! Ah! Hey, what are you waiting for? You got the gun. Waste him. Waste the son of a bitch. We need keys, Gooley. Car keys. The handcuff key. Oh, yeah. Car keys. Keep looking. You... You shot me. That's right, Jerry. I shot you with your own gun. And you were worried about poor Gooley here. You bastard. You crazy egghead bastard. Ah! What the hell? Nothing in his life became him like the leaving it. What did you do that for? Because he questioned my sanity. Because you didn't think I would. Who the hell is that shoot? The attendant. He's coming out of the store. Ah! Oh, that is a shotgun. We've got to get to the car, Gooley. Come here. Oh, please, Jesus, thank you. Where did he go? He must be reloading. The car. Come on. In you go. Ah! How the hell am I supposed to go? Oh, come on. Where are you hit, Gooley? Where, Gooley? Everywhere. 
everywhere. Oh, it's blood. Yes, Cooley. There's quite a bit of blood, but just think about something else. How about a poem? Hmm. John Dunn seems appropriate at a time like this. No? Wait, I see you more as a romantic. Uh, we'll start with Wordsworth. What do you mean, the hell long? The world is too much with us, late and soon. Getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours. Oh. You seem to have suffered a setback, Gooley. The car is dead. But, but there's Bob's feed and garden supply up ahead. Why don't we just stop in on Bob? I, I can't. Oh, there is no I anymore. It's we now. Do you understand? All right. Let's go. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Come on. Good. All right. Hello? Anybody here? Come in. Oh, gotta, gotta sit down. What? Don't shoot me, mister. I got my hands up. I'll empty the register. It's not money that we need, son. Are you Bob? There is no Bob. I'm... I'm Elbert. Elbert? Hmm. Well, Elbert, we need the keys to your car. But I, I, ain't, I ain't, ain't got a car, mister. My mom dropped me off here this morning just like always. No. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. <laughs> when first we practice to deceive, the next bullet will be all yours, Elbert. No, don't. You go out back, look for yourself. There's no damn car, I swear. I'm somewhat encumbered, as you can see. Uh, bring me that wheelbarrow. Sure. All right, Cooley. In you go. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> now then, Elbert, we'll need a hacksaw to get these handcuffs off. Mister, we sell feed and grain, farm supplies... You want a shovel or 50 pounds of oats, I got you covered, but a hacksaw? Oh, that's too bad. Well, then we'll take those Cokes in your cooler and hats. The sun is like an evil eye out there. You don't got no hats, mister. Hmm. You keep disappointing me, Elbert. <laughs> to deal plainly, Elbert, I fear that I am not in my perfect mind. Do you understand? Mister, I don't understand nothing. I just work here, okay? I live with my mom and I make eight fifty an hour and I ain't no hero. Fair enough, Albert, but please don't disappoint me again. I'm going to give you an assignment now. I want you to step into this closet and count backwards from a thousand out loud. You can do that, can't you, Albert? Let me hear you. One thousand. Mm hmm. Nine hundred ninety-nine. Yeah. Nine hundred ninety. Very good. Now, when you're done, you may come out and go back to living your life of quiet desperation. But if you open that door before you get to zero, Elbert, I will kill you. Do you understand? Yes, Mister. Thank you, Mister. Don't mention it, Elbert. Into the closet, then. One thousand. Nine hundred ninety-nine. Mm hmm. 998. Louder, Albert. 997. Then? 996. Mm-hmm. 995. Five, Albert. 995. Now, pull yourself together, Gooley. We have some shopping to do. Definitely an owl, Gooley. A clamorous owl that nightly hoots and wonders at our quaint spirits. <sighs> quaint. This is rather a quaint situation we find ourselves in, don't you think? The desert dogs handcuffed together, back wandering our favorite part of the desert. <laughs> uh, wouldn't you say that was quaint, Gooley? No, I guess you wouldn't. I don't suppose you want a Coke. Hmm? 
You know, you're not exactly holding up your end of the conversation, Cousin Gooley. I mean, I realize you're laboring under a certain handicap, but still. Uh... What's my plan, you ask? What do I intend to do next? How will I resolve this quaint situation? That's a good question, Gooley. I'll just open a Coke for myself while I ponder it, if you don't mind. Mm. Oh, my, my. The last one. We've been a thirsty lot, haven't we? Ah. 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 Warm as blood. All right. Taking the long view. I would have to say that the plan is to recover the money and leave the country. Yes. Yeah. I have in mind a nice chateau on the Côte d'Azur, say in Antibes, which is handy to con, or a villa on some Greek island in the Aegean where I could look out onto Homer's wine-dark sea. Uh, I suppose for the money's sake I might have to settle for something in the Caymans. Uh, you, you notice the theme here, Gooley. All these places are on the water, the cool, cool water. What's that, Gooley? You don't want the money anymore? It, it's all mine now? I can have your share to make up for all this trouble you're causing me? Why, that is very generous of you. I, I, I'm touched. I, uh, well, well, it would seem that this desert is not exactly deserted. <laughs> there must be a veritable menagerie out there, lurking in the dark. I believe that they're waiting for you... Your uh, fan club. <laughs> Go away! Get! If you don't mind, I, I'm going to wheel you over to the other side of the fire, Gooley. <clears throat> it is hard to get comfortable when you're handcuffed to a man in a wheelbarrow. Uh, I would really like to get comfortable, Gooley. Uh, I'm not feeling very well, and I need to sleep. You, 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 you tired me out today, and uh, tomorrow, well, I'd guess it must be at least 20 miles to the spring, 20 miles away from six million dollars. <laughs> yes, it was hot, wasn't it? The sun was truly a punishment. You know, Gooley, I don't think the heat is your friend. You're getting a little ripe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, which brings me back to the plan. In the short term, you see, I need to find a way to get free of you. Yeah, that's right. I'm breaking up the old desert dogs. It's not that I don't appreciate your company, Gooley, but uh, you've become something of a dead weight, <laughs> so to speak. I believe it was Kipling who said, He travels fastest who travels alone. I have no idea how I'm going to get these handcuffs off. Oh, let's sleep on it. What do you say? Very good. Sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care. Or is it unraveled? Oh, I must be tired. Well, good night to you too, Gooley. <laughs> uh, don't worry, it'll be a hard day, but by tomorrow night we'll be sleeping at the spring... The water and the money. What? No. Oh. God damn buzzards. Hey, you two, hey! Get away from him! Got your eyes. You should have said something. What are you standing there for? Go! Get out! 
The restaurant is closed. Why, you... I said go! Fly away, you bastard! Leave us alone! Yeah. Now, how did it get so hot so quickly? Hmm. We need to find you some shade, Gooley. You're starting to swell up. Ripeness is all. What? Who's there? I've got a gun. I've got to get out of the sun, Gooley. It's like someone's pounding a nail into my head. And these buzzards are just standing here like lords of the land watching us. What's the matter, mister? Would you rather he said, never more? <laughs> you crack me up! Oh, my God, it's, it's the buzzards. They're, they're talking. What is this? What are you? We're turkey vultures, if you must know. A.K.A. carrion crow or redneck buzzard. Uh, not good. <laughs> Talking vultures, not good at all. This is a very bad sign, Gooley. Oh, we can tell you're losing it, mister. You missed one of the most famous quotes in all of Shakespeare. King Lear, Act 5, Scene 2. <sighs> Gloucester goes, No further, sir, a man may rot even here. Rot even here? He says rot even here? Damn straight. So Edgar goes, What? In ill thoughts again, men must endure their going hence even as their coming hither. Ripeness is all. Come on, Gooley. We're getting out of here. Hey, mister, you going hence or hither? <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. Leave, Leave me. Ah! Damn. I'm sorry, Gooley. Here. Get back in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> God, what happened to your feet? Hmm. Coyotes must have nibbled on them last night. Coyotes are tricky, Professor. Never trust a critter that comes out only at night. Now, you take turkey vultures. Yeah. We're honest-to-God birds. We do our business in broad daylight where everyone can see. Damn straight. No secrets with a turkey vulture. Stop it. I'm leaving. Do you hear? You don't exist. They don't exist, Gooley. I'm imagining them. Imagination ain't that good, mister. <laughs> we are going on, Gooley. Forging ahead. Make haste. The better foot before. Are they following us? No. Good. Right. We keep the mountains to the left and walk due east. We should be at the spring in a couple of hours. If I can just get through this day, Gooley, I'll be a millionaire. Where is it? There's nothing here but ants. Wait, wait. There's the pink rock that looks like a duck. And here's the saguaro with his hands up. So where is it? was here. Right here. Don't you remember, Gooley? We, we camped here for three or four days, and there, there was water the whole time. The ants. What do you mean? Ants can't drink up an entire spring. What? What are you trying to tell me? You're not making any sense. Where is all the water? Nature. The world, more or less. You little vermin! <laughs> you better move. You better get the hell out of here. You hear me? <laughs> Listen to me, Gooley. <laughs> Arguing with ants. <laughs> I have got to sit down. <laughs> Huh? Oh. 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 Damn it. Oh. Oh. Uh. Sorry about that, Gooley. Uh. Uh. There's nothing wrong with me that a tall glass of iced tea wouldn't fix. <laughs> uh. Yes, and a beer for you. <laughs>
Howdy, Professor. How's your imagination this afternoon? Failing. Where's all that money, mister? Over there. Buried near the pink rock that looks like a duck. Well, aren't you going to dig it up? I'm resting. Later. Hey, how come you stomped all these poor little girls? <sighs> it's okay, girls. He ain't going to hurt you no more. I'm thirsty. They was just trying to tell you something. I'm hot and I'm thirsty. The spring dried up. That's all that's happening here. The goddamn global warming, don't you know? Okay, girls, who wants to step up? Go on and have your say. <coughs> In short, I maintain that all great men, or even men a little out of the common, that is to say, capable of giving some new word, must from their very nature be criminal. More or less, of course. Otherwise, it's hard for them to get out of the common rut. And to remain in the common rut is what they can't submit to from their very nature again. And to my mind, they ought not, indeed, to submit to it. The common people preserve and populate the world. The extraordinary move the world and lead it to its goal. Well, Professor? I should know that. I know, I know it. I, I just can't think anymore. I'll give you a hint. It's a Russian. But not a commie. From a book called Something and Something. But not War and Peace. I, I... Uh... Sorry. Ah, your time is up, Professor Raskolnikov. And the answer is... Crime and punishment. Damn straight, that's crime. And punishment. Uh, is that what this is about, then? <laughs> you want me to repent my sins? Express remorse? Make amends to the ants? It ain't only the ants, mister. Who are you to judge me? How many illiterate misreadings of the scarlet letter have you slogged through? How many greasy French toast sticks have you eaten while you stood cafeteria watch? How many cracker moms have cursed you for giving their little linebackers a well-deserved F in freshman comp? And all for $24,000 a year. That makes you a great man, Professor. So extraordinary you can move the world and lead it to its goal? Is that why you're always quoting from books you never wrote? Maybe there are no great men anymore. Maybe there are only accountants and lawyers and programmers and... English teachers? You probably think that the ants ain't real. That's okay, girls. You go now. Come back after we're done messing with him. Well, according to you, we're imaginary, too. That means you're here all by yourself, mister. So who are you talking to, Professor? What is this? What do you want with me? Just now, nothing much. But later today, or maybe tomorrow... Your eyes... Maybe some tongue. No. I'm partial to deliver myself, but for that, we'll have to wait for the coyotes to open you up. Sometimes they get greedy, but seeing as how there are two of you boys... I don't trust them. No, I never have. You're saying I'm going to die? Well, yeah. We thought you knew. I mean, here you are in the middle of the desert, handcuffed to a dead man in a wheelbarrow, and the weatherman is predicting a high of 102, maybe more. It ain't all that bad. Death, I mean. Don't you remember your Emily Dickinson? Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves and immortality. Think of it, Professor. Immortality. There is no immortality. That's just a lie the morons tell themselves. That's okay. I don't see no carriages anyway. <laughs> Wheelbarrows, then. But I, I, I can't die. I, I wasn't shot. I, I'm not sick. I've seen this lots of times, mister, and you've got all the symptoms. Symptoms? Symptoms of what? Let's see. Very high temperature. Hot, dry red skin. Check. So I've been out in the sun. Deep breathing and fast pulse. Then shallow breathing and weak pulse. Yep. Dilated pupils. Look over here, mister. Get away from me. Yeah, oh yeah, they're like black dimes. Confusion, delirium, hallucinations. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's so funny? Next, you got your convulsions. Then your loss of consciousness. Face it. You got heat stroke, Professor. The sun, it's in your face. 
Bartholomew. No, this isn't happening. San Frontier. I am not going to die here. Bartholomew. Gooley, tell them the plan. As soon as I feel better, I'm going to dig up the money. Then, then I'm going to retire to the south of France and and drink champagne and 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 lie on the beach and. and... Mister, unless a helicopter drops out of the sky in the next ten minutes and rushes you to a hospital, you're pretty much cooked. All right. All right. Then let it end. To die. To sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. Only you forgot the next line, mister. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come? No, no dreams. Death is the end. You sure about that? Listen, what's that? Here! Gully, Gully, I, I can't get up. Wave at them for me. They've got to see us. They see you, all right. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> what did I say? I told you I wasn't going to die here. They're coming in. <laughs> 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 Every dog has his day. I told you, can't trust them. Damn straight. Hey, you guys are supposed to be nocturnal. That means you only work the night shift. Special circumstances. Not to mention time and a half. This, this doesn't make any sense. You, you've got paws. You can't fly a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> so he's pretty far gone, then. He must be, if you're here. Confused. Delirious. Hallucinating. Coyote child. No, no, you, you don't understand. So, I could rip his throat out. That would shut him up. All right. All right. I'll show you where the money is hidden. We'll, we'll split it. No, you, you can have it all. To Jerry. Albert. Albert, listen, I, 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 I'm i sorry I shot you. Uh... There's no Jerry here, Professor. It's just us scavengers. No. No! Go! 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 Help! Help! Help yourself, Professor. I've got problems of my own. See how you like being dead. <laughs> Professor? Mr. Kurtz, he dead. Uh, it's over then? Oh, no. It goes on and on and on. World without end. I'm in. Gooley? What's happening? Gooley! He hath awakened from the dream of life. Oh, that's good. Who is that, Keith? Ah, uh, Shelley, actually. Let's eat. Like they say, boils and jewels, birds of a feather eat together. Now that's what you might call a vulture Thanksgiving. Professor with all the trimmings. <laughs> they sure were a couple of buzzards after my own heart and other body parts. <laughs> wow, that gory story was so frightening, it almost scared me. Poor Professor, he's now the newest member of the Dead Poet Society. <laughs> You know, kiddies, that vast, torrid, blistering desert in our tale of terror reminds me of what Cleopatra said to Julius Caesar. Gold and silver I cannot give you, but if you ever need sand, <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> Hey, 
Tales from the Crypt, Carrion Death, was written by James Patrick Kelly, adapted from the story in the EC comic book Shock Suspense Stories, originally published by William M. Gaines. Carrion Death starred Campbell Scott as Wall and featured Todd Cummings as DeVore, John Colvenbach as Jerry, Kevin Townley as Elbert, Raphael Ferrer as the Warden, Peter Francis James as Miguel, Sarah Provost as Doris, and John Kassir as the Crypt Keeper. Carrion Death was produced and directed by Brian Smith, associate producer Larissa James, sound designed by John Colucci, Additional Crypt Keeper material by Jack Wool. Tales from the Crypt series theme composed by Danny Elfman, with lyrics by Jack Wool. Theme arranged and performed by Ohad Talmore. Series story editor, Tony Daniel. Series announcer, Alyssa Honeycutt. Executive producers, Jack Wool, Brian Smith, Richard Donner, David Geiler, Walter Hill, Joel Silver, and Robert Zemeckis. This has been a production of Sci-Fi.com's Seeing Ear Theater. The crypt is closed.